All right, guys, look at, let's look at lesson 10.4, inscribed angles. Our essential, essential question is, how is the measure of an inscribed angle related to its intercepted arcs? Remember, an intercepted arc, we can have a minor or a major, and that's if we look at these radii, the arc in between them is your intercepted arc. So it can be from here to here, or all the way around the long way from here to here. Now remember, your central angle measure is less than 180. That's your minor arc. Your central angle is greater than 180, so I would take 360 minus 105, and that number would give me my greater arc, and that would be this guy right here. So we're going to see how is the measure of an inscribed angle related to its intercepted arc, and at the end of this, you'll be able to use the relationships between angles and arcs and circles to find their measures. So this is a video. Go ahead and pause this vocab vocabulary down, get it in your notes. A chord are we know what chords are we learned those earlier in the week actually we learned those last week and let's look at this problem before we move on for the bell work I threw this one in here I wanted to know the length length of the intercepted arc now I told you every once in a while you may see let's go ahead and put this in if you want to resize yes oh and you're still super zoomed in oh not at all what I wanted and then it just disappeared. Cool. All right. So remember, I had told you if you don't see the radius, go ahead and make it one. That is a horrible one. I apologize. Now, anytime we see length, we know we're going to be in the first dimension where that is only length, no width, no depth. So whatever unit we use is going to be the first power. Sorry, I'm still getting back in the swing of this pen. Do we know our answer is going to be the first power? And I know I want a portion of the circumference. So I know if I were to start here and go all the way around, I would go 360 degrees. But I only want a fraction of that 360 degrees. I only want those 105 degrees we're looking at. And then I want 105 of the 360 degrees all the way around the circle, but I only want this arc length. So that's this part right here, and then I'm going to multiply that by my circumference. So if you think about this as a percentage of the circumference, like we've been doing, this will simplify to 7. Oh, skipping the gun, jumping the guns here. We're going to go ahead and rewrite this as 105. Remember, this is the same as 2 pi r over 1 times 2, and then my radius is 1 over 360 and I'm going to go ahead and leave pi out since we always do these in terms of pi we need to start working in radians sooner than later 105 times 2 times 1 is 210 over 360 pi all that's left for me to do now is simplify and that is going to give me 7 over 12 pi so the length of the intercepted arc is 7 twelfths pi all right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. So go ahead and pause this, read this, write it down, get it in your notes. And when you start the video again, we'll start talking about it. But I'm going to go ahead and move on since you'll just be unpausing it. So we're going to have three cases here, which we normally don't have. But each one of those cases is basically telling you the same thing. There you go basically telling you the same things over and over again thank you and that is simply the measure of an inscribed angle that's the measure or the angle inscribed inside inscribed inside of the circle so we have two chords that share a common endpoint that was from the last slide this is your inscribed angle it's an angle inside of the circle this angle works for all three of these cases if your center happens to be on one of your chords, if your sensor is in between your chords, or if your sensor is outside of your chords, this, our conclusion here, our measure of angle S is equal to one half of the measure of arc RT, holds true for all three of these. And we'll go ahead and I'll show you a couple of these really quick, just so you can see how they work. We'll go both ways. We'll go from arc to angle and angle back to arc. So let's look at this one. Let's say here that the measure of 
the arc RT is 210 degrees. So that means from R to T. Now, by inspection, that's definitely not the case, right? This is definitely less than a semicircle, so it's definitely not going to be over 180. But I'm just giving you an example, and this is a nice, easy number to divide by 2, right? The measure of R RT from our previous slide, or right here, the measure of angle S is equal to 1 half the measure of arc RT. So I'm going to say the measure of angle S is equal to 1 half RT, where I'm going to substitute 1 half, and then RT becomes 210. 1 half of 210 is 105. So our measure of angle S is 105. Again, that's obviously an acute angle, but this holds true there. For all these, let's clear this off. Realistically, our case where oh, this one right here would have made a lot more sense at 210. So, well, let's look at this. Let's say this, the measure of this angle right here was 103. So from here I went, I took the arc length, divided it by 2, and that gave me the measure of angle S. Now I'm given the angle, so I need to find the arc length. Well, if you think about it, if the measure of angle S is equal to 1 half of R T, to get rid of that 1 half, I can say twice the measure of angle S is equal to twice of 1 half times R T. These will cancel and I'll get twice the measure of angle S is equal to the arc length. So I would just take 103 times 2 and that will give me R T is 206. So that works both ways. Now let's see. We'll do them together. We'll do one. We'll start with an arc length. We'll find the central angle measure and then we'll verify that we did the math right. That's going to be on this guy on the right here. So Let's say this is, this looks pretty small, so let's call it 27 degrees. So if I know that the measure of angle S is 27, then I know that the arc, the length of arc RT is equal to 2S, 2 times 27 is 54. So this is 54, and to check that, we would take RT's length and divide it by 2, and we get right back to 27. So that's that theorem right there. I guess we don't need to clear it if we're not using it again. All right. So here, and this is going to be something I want to write down or write on for the other screen. We're going to go ahead and jump ahead and do our next theorem with this one and get a little additional practice. So we're looking for the measure of angle E and F. Let's pull up a new, no, so close to, yes. Okay, so we know that DG, that's this purple section, is 45.6. Now that means the two chords that share point E and the two chords that share point F both intercept the same arc DG. So we can find angle E by doing 45.6 divided by 2, and that should give me 27.8. No, 22.8, sorry. So the measure of angle E is 22.8. Now I'm going to point something out here. Obviously, no matter how we look at this, this angle, like we keep saying over and over again, the measure of an angle dictates whatever's on the opposite side of it, whether it's a side, an arc, anything else that we've really been working with. So if these two create the same arc, don't these have to be congruent angles? Well, yeah. And that would also give me 22.8 to be 45.6 when I multiply it by 2. That's really what this next theorem is going to tell us. If two inscribed angles intercept the same arc, they are congruent. See here I have the arc RU 
and that is intercepted by the two orange chords and the two blue chords. You'll notice they're the same measure in every one of these examples because they have they're the inscribed angles that intercept the same word. Go ahead and copy this down. I'm going to go ahead and move forward. So here's our theorem 10.9. And this is saying, this is going back to 10.3 and 10.2 when we were talking about points of tangency. So remember, a line that is tangent to a circle touches that circle at one and only one point on the circumference. So DE is our line of tangency, and it touches right at the point E. And if you look here, we have chord AE. So we have a lot going on here. We have chord AE, where E just happens to be the point of tangency for the line DE. And all this is telling us is the measure of an angle formed by a tangent and a chord, so that's DE and AE, is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So here we have the angle between the line of the tangent line and the chord is 72 degrees. So the arc from E back around to A is twice whatever the angle measure is, or if we know the arc of 144, we divide it by two and get 72. This is gonna be a common theme in these, and we're gonna to need to know all of these for the homework, which funnily enough is what we're gonna start next. Not a long topic. Theorems don't look very hard, right? Pretty easy looking to keep track of these. They're all very similar as well. But let's look at the homework. This gets a little bit more confusing. Oh, so obviously if we're in class, we would solve this together. But I'm going to go ahead and bring this over. And I want you to go ahead and notice it's asking the measure of angle 4, which I'll highlight, is equal to one half of what arc? Right, we're trying to find an angle measure using the arc. This is in general. Don't worry about those numbers. We want it in a general sense, which is usually a little harder, but it's not too bad so, all right. so we want to know looking at angle 4 it's this guy right here so angle 4 is created by our tangent line it's so much harder than it probably looks to copy down with this so here's our tangent line Angle, angle 4 is created by the tangent line and QR. I'm actually going to write it here. Angle 4 is created by the tangent line and line segment Q. Let me erase, oh, I can't really erase it now. But basically what we're going to be doing in the rest of the, today, every time you do the homework or anything, the easiest way to do this is look at the angle you're looking at, start at one end point and trace the circle around, keep going around until you hit back where you started. And this looks like I'm gonna start You ready? I skipped right over Q. Did this in class earlier. So, starting here. I'm going from there to S around to Q. Now you see my red line is the intercepted arc of my two green lines that I have here. So that means I have to go from Q to S to R or R to S to Q. That's really the same arc, right? If I take one half of QSR, I get angle four. That's really all we're doing on this homework. Let's switch over, double check it. QSR again, without all the color and stuff going on, I'm going to start here. I'm going to take from the line of tangency, or the tangent line, sorry, not the point, or even at the point of tangency, and go clockwise until I get back to the other side that angle R or angle 4 is bounded by. That's this line and this line. All right, here's the one that is going to be the longest part of your homework, the longest part of your test and quiz. 
this will definitely be on your test this will definitely be on your quizzes and this is breaking this down using all these theorems over and over again come on buddy we're so close you want to resize yes okay so it says find the value of each variable so I know I'm going to be looking for and I'm going to do it in alphabetical order Pearson's nice enough to actually have it the variables in the order you're going to want to find them anyways so I want to find a B C and D so looking at this I did tell you this is something we kind of did in class I gave everyone five to ten minutes in their pods to look at this and think about how they want to attack it and a lot of people were saying well we can start with if we wanted to know C well, actually the most popular one was B we can look at B but we really don't know what point makes that and we'll know more about it when we get to 10.5 but to find B you would really want something like that and we'll learn more about it like I said in 10.5 but if I were to try and start with C I could say C is equal to one half and then I look at the lines here and here so it would be the part bounded by or the intercepted arc of B plus A. But then we have a problem. Look how many, everything we have is a variable other than the one half given to us by the theorem. So we definitely can't start there. So let's start with A and look at it. If I were to look for A, I'm gonna try and find a relationship that will result in only having A as a variable and it looks like if I start with 107, that intercepted arc goes from here around to here. Now, if I look at that, I have 95 and 107. Now, remember, your angle measure is equal to one half of the arc. So I can say 107 is equal to one half right so here's my angle and here's my intercept arc one half of 95 plus a really wish I had my calculator out with me right now speed this right up so I'm going to distribute one half through so I'm going to do 95 divided by 2 and I'm going to have 47.5 so that is one half times 95. And then I'm going to have one half times A, which is the same as A over two. Let me take this over here real quick just to show it to you. If I do one half times A, that's the same as one half times A over one, which gives me A over two. Which is why I say you can multiply by one half or divide by two. You'll see you get the same thing either way. Let's clean this up a little bit since we're going to have to do it anyways. Now I'm going to have 107 is equal to 47.5 plus A divided by two. So I'm going to do 107 minus 47.5. And I get 59.5 is equal to A over two. I want to clear that denominator, so I multiply both sides by 2. 59.5 divided by 2 is 119. And then here, these will simplify. And I get A is equal to 119. So I'm going to erase all of this. A is equal to 119. I'm going to go ahead and fill that in right here. Now, I'm going to want to find B next. This is the one that was the trickiest in class. I'll be honest, I looked at this for maybe four minutes before I kind of was like, oh yeah, I guess you could do that. And what that is, is we know the sum of the angles around a circle are 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. Now, if I know I have 95 and 119, I still need to know B, and that's what I'm working towards. But I also would need to know the measure of this arc here. So what I'm going to do is look at my angles and see if there's maybe something I can do.
that will help me find either B or this arc. So if I know B, I can find this arc. If I know this arc, I can find B. So if I want to look at B, my best bet is going to either be using angle C and its intercepted arc, which then leaves me with the variable C and B. And I can't do anything with two variables, so I'm not going to be able to do that. And then I can also look at D and see that I'll have D and its intercepted arc, which then includes B. So I'm back to two variables. So what I really want to do is this. I know this is 95 for this arc here. And I see I have 97 here. If I made this X, then I would have two constants and one variable that I can solve for. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase this. I'm going to change the color a little bit. I don't like that color. Let's go orange. So I'm going to solve for X now. Now, if this angle 97 generates the arc from here to here, I can say 97 is equal to 1 half 95 plus X. Now, 1 half of 95 is 47.5 when I distribute that in. And that's again, 1 half distributed to X is just X divided by 2, 97. 97 minus 47.5 is going to be 49.5 is equal to x over 2. Multiply both sides by 2. And I get x equals 99. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase all of this before I plug in x up there. Now the reason I wanted to do it this way is now I have three of the four arcs. So if I know my X is 99, I can now solve for that missing arc. The nice thing is these get easier and easier and once you kind of see how to do it, what the process is, you'll be able to do them pretty quickly. So I know that X is 99, so I'm gonna do 360 minus 99 minus 95 minus 119 double check on my calculator that I just misplaced even on the YouTube videos it's just like watching me look for my eraser or mouse in class so that's pretty cool so 360 minus 99 minus 95 minus 119 gives me 47 so now I know my B is 47 to check that I can add up all my arc links on the outside and if I get 360 back I've done this correctly. So now I can say B is 47. I think the dog's having a nightmare. All right, now if I look at C, I know this is 119 now, and that's convenient because this intercepted arc is for this one and this one. Now that I know A and B, to find C, I can just say C is equal to 1 half A plus B and that is going to be C is equal to 1 half of 119 plus 47. That means C is equal to 1 half of 166. So C is 83. Oh, we can do that until the end. Now, to find D, this is really the easiest part, but you have to go back a few lessons here. We have a quadrilateral or a foregone. And a foregone just means we have N equals four, where N is the number of sides. So if I want to find what the sum of the interior angles would be, I'm going to do 180 times my decomposition of a polygon, which is N minus two. And that's going to be 180 times four minus two which is just 180 times two, which gives me 360. So the sum of the interior angles of this quadrilateral should be 360 degrees. Now conveniently, I have three of the four, 
So changing colors really quick just so you can follow along. What I'm going to do now is find that one missing angle, which is D. Minus 97. So that's 360 minus 83 minus 107 minus 97. And that does give me 73. So my final answer is A equals 119, B equals 47, C equals 83, and D equals 73. So it looks like we did get those right. Let's double check. 119, 47, 83, 73. Perfect. All right. This one looks a little harder than it actually is. I'm going to take, oh, take the whole thing over there. I think this is actually one of the easiest problems that you're going to be able to get in this whole topic 10. So we want to find the measure of each indicated, find each indicated measure for circle zero. O. So here's our center. Our center is denoted by O. So this is circle O. And I want to know what is the measure of angle A? So I'm going to look at A. I'm going to I always trace the inscribed angle. It makes it so much easier for me, even though I'm really bad at tracing. So there's the measure of angle A. Now, the arc, the intercepted arc, is right here at 86 degrees. So remember, if I have an arc length, or an arc measure, sorry, and I'm trying to find the angle, I just divide that by 2. 86 divided by 2 is 43. Let's clean this up. All right, now I want to know what is the measure of arc CE. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to identify the arc I'm looking for. That's this guy here, horribly traced. Now I'm going to follow the lines back. So I have this line and this line, and that is 26. Now remember, if I'm giving, given the angle of 26 degrees, to find the arc, I multiply by 2, and that gives me the arc of C. So 26 times 2 is 52. So CE is also what well, is going to be 52. So again, this 26 degrees generates this arc. So if I double it, I will know the arc, the length of the arc it generates, and that is 52. Now I want to look at measure of angle C. Now I'm not going to actually do any of the math here. I want to point something out here. A and C are generate the same intercepted arc, right? They both go from B to D. So if we go back to this one, two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. And if we go back here, we'll see this inscribed angle, A is intercepts the arc BD, and C intercepts the arc BD. So they must be congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that in as 43. Don't have to do the math there. All right, let's look at the measure of angle D. So we want the measure. So we know we're dividing by 2 since we're finding the measure of the angle. This intercepted arc is 78 degrees. So divide that by 2, and I get 39. And then this one's a little tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and fill CE was 52. And the reason I'm doing that is because I see that it's asking for angle A, B, E. Let's do it in this color here. So I'm going to go from A to B to E. So that's this arc right here. It intercepts this arc. So just like our segment addition postulate says we can add them together if they're on the same line, an arc is just a curved line, so we can add them together. We can do 78 plus 52 divided by 2. And that'll give me the measure of the angle that generated it. So that's this whole guy here. Now, we should have a clue here that if we've done this correctly, this, this answer should be greater than 26. And that's because we already know that CBE is 26. So the angle that generates the larger arc should also be greater than 26. 70 plus 50 is 120. 
and 8 plus 2 is 10. So 120 plus two, 10 is 130 divided by 2 is 65. 65 is greater than 26. So we can pretty confidently say that angle measure is 65 degrees. Let's go back here. Got that one, got that one. And let's check our work. We have 43, 52, 43, 39, 65. All right, we're on a roll. And we're on a roll up until this question. So let's do, don't want to save it. Let's bring this over. PowerPoint up top. Now, I've never once told anybody that I am great at drawing these. So please suffer along with me. I am going to be looking at right here, a 16 notch socket wrench. So this is gonna be a N equals, we'll be trying it with a mouse, N equals 16. And we're gonna to wanna to find some of these angles. So let's bring this over. Perfect. Hey, I even brought that over, that's awesome. All right, so now, and this is gonna work for you on your EOC too. I cannot draw. So what I am gonna draw is just this. And I know that's nothing like what a 16 gun will look like. But what I've drawn is basically that piece. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can get a brighter color on there. F3, it looks pretty bright. So if I were looking at this, I am looking at this straight line. Right, and then I would need 16 of those lines to go around this socket. But I know I have a 16 gun, so I'm gonna do 180 and minus two. Now it's regular, it's a regular polygon, so we know we can divide that by the original number of sides to get the exact angle measure that is uniform for every one of these angles. So I'm gonna do 180, this is gonna be 16 minus two over 16, which is 180 times 14 over 16, which will give me 157.5. So that means for this angle from here to here is 157.5. This is where it's going to get complicated for me to draw because I'm not very good spatially with drawing things. So feel free to laugh at home. I'm fine with it. We always have a good laugh, especially the other day when I was drawing those trucks. Well aware those didn't look anything like trucks. And I'm fine with that. But this will help you get through it. So if we look at this, it looks like how I kind of drew this green, it kind of overpowered it right here. And then we have a tooth coming down from each flat piece. Now there's a bunch of ways to go about this, but what I've been doing is I've been taking 360 because that is the sum of the degrees around a circle and this is a socket, and if you ever look at sockets, they are always circles. And I divide by 16, because that's how many teeth I want in my socket. And that's gonna give me 22.5. The other way we can do this is we can continue this line and this line. And we can find out if we continue this line, we would have a transversal across the two lines and we could see stuff like their exterior angles would have to also be 22.5. There's a bunch of things we can do, but basically what this 22.5 represents is this angle from here to here. So we have 157.5 for the large angle in green. Maybe I should put that in green. Oh, what did I just erase? Okay. So in green, we have the 157.5. And in purple, we have 22.5 that we're taking away from that angle. That's this one right here. So minus 22.5. Now, what is that going to be? That should be 135 if I remember correctly, but let's double check. Yep, yeah, so. It's gonna be 135. So this is where my drawing's really gonna kind of fail us, but if you're following along mentally, it shouldn't be too bad. What this 135 represents, let's do it in a new color. Don't really like that orange. All right, 
what this 135 represents is this arc right here. Now, I want to know what angle generates that so she knows which angle to me, or what angle would make all the notches the same size. So if I know this arc, I'm going to divide it by 2. And that will give me the uniform socket angle. And that's going to be 67.5. So every one of these sock teeth will be at a 67.5. Point five angle. Now, where I've let you down here with my inability to draw these very well is this is only one of the 16 teeth. So if you can kind of imagine taking this and doing a similarity transformation where I'm going to translate, rotate, and then dilate. I'm going to slide this up here and try and get what I've drawn here over one of the teeth. And you can kind of see how all the teeth would continue from there for the other 15. That might make this 67.5 a little easier to see. But right here inside these teeth is a 67.5 degree angle. All right, there's your concept summary. There's nothing else after this. I'm sure you all did great on your FSA. I'm sure you all, if you haven't done it, will be doing great on your FSA. Um, all the homework on this is not due until Saturday. Concentrate on your FSA make this not much of a worry for yourself right now once you're done with the FSA take some time to relax and then knock this out for me and we'll see you when you get back to class